Here are some tips and tricks that will make your life just a little bit easier when working in Jump. One thing that happens more often that I want to admit is that when importing data from Excel, you've seen the method that I highlight all the data, I go to my Jump tab, I press data table, but when the data is then in Jump, all the headers are in the first row as if it was some data. And there's multiple ways of approaching this, but the ad hoc way of just quickly removing that mistake is, is highlighting that first row, pressing Control C to copy, going to the, the column list, and then I highlight all the names, and I press Control V, and you can see now I've copied those names directly into the, the headers. So that's just a really nice way um, of working with your column headers. Because all the data was imported with the first row being some text, Jump has guessed that this is categorical data, but that is not the case for many of these columns. These are actually continuous data, and I need now to revert those into a continuous column. And a way of seeing that is that I, that I got this red symbol here, red showing that this is a nominal, then I have ordinal, and I, and I have continuous. I can't select continuous because I have a um, like a text in there. So what can we do? Well, first of all is to delete the first row because we really don't need that. So I'm just going to go there and delete row. And then I go, I highlight all the ones that are continuous. I go to column and standardized attributes, which is a, just really nice thing. And what, it, what standardized attribute does is you can change the same attribute for multiple columns at once. So for these, they all have the same error. And I want to change the attribute that's called data type. I want to say this is actually not a character. This is a numeric value. And I also want to change modeling type. So I go modeling type. And I want to say that this is actually continuous data. I press OK. And you can see that all of these now are, are defined to be a continuous variable. There are still some things in this data set that I wish to refine before I go ahead with my data analysis. And, and one thing is that, that this column is called sample number and all the data points are called sample zero, sample one, sample two. And it's really unnecessary for there to be a sample in the name. So I wanna remove that. Um, and to do that, go into one of my favorite tools, it's called Recode. So you can find that by right clicking and to press Recode. You can also press that little button there, which will then recode, which will open this platform. And in here, you can see the old values and the new values. And I want to remove sample. So I go to the red triangle. I go to replace string. And this is really just a fancy search and replace function. And, and the reason I really like this rather than just the control find in, in Excel or other places is that I can search for text. So I can search for sample and notice in real, as I do that, notice what happens down here in the replacement value. I start typing and jump shows me what I am removing. And I can then input in if I want to have number instead. Um, but really, I, I actually don't just want to have nothing. So I just want to have the number. So I go ahead and press OK. And I can then replace this either as a new column. I can do this as in a formula column, or I can do this in place. Um, it's, I would say it's always best to either have a new column or a formula column because if you do it in place, I actually delete the raw data that I have and that could be a, a bad idea. Um, so, but if, and if I do it as a formula column, that can be really nice is that if I'm not done with this data, let's say that I get a new, a new rows, I sample some more serial and job will automatically do the same recoding to those new data importations. Another way to obtain the same result in recode is if we go into recode, you see, I'm really just interested in the last piece here. So I can go up in here and say, I want the last word and job will remove everything but the last word. And I want this to be, job will still think this is text because there's been some text at some point. So I also want to go in and say, I need you to parse this as a number. And now you see the first thing I did, this is a, like a really nice see to see the changes you've done and you can go back and forth. 
uh, if if what you're doing is not happening as you're hoping. That does tend to happen. Um, but now, I first thing was to change the last word, and then I parse this numbers. And I know I said not to do it, but let's just do that in place. That didn't work. So let's do it in a new column. Okay. Now, I don't want this to start with sample zero. I want to start this with sample one, because I don't like sample zero, the name of that. So I'm going to put it in a new column. And I just want to go, well, first, go to formula. And in the formula, it's, yeah, it's, it is what it says. It's a way to make formulas. So I want to take sample number two and just add one to that. And you see, all of a sudden, I start at one rather than starting at zero. Okay, what else can we do in this uh, formula column? Well, we could do quite a lot. Um, so let me just show you a, a quick example. Let's say that I want to have the ratio between calories and fat. So I double click there to get a new column. I can go into column info. Let's say this is calorie by fat. I say column property, I want to have a formula, edit formula, and I want it to have calories divided by the fat content. But notice when I press apply now, that some of these will be a dot. And why is that? Well, it's because some of the times fat is zero and I, I'm not dividing by zero. But I don't want that to come in as, as a missing data point because that will mean I can't use this new column that I've made to, um, or when I use it for data analysis, it will just ignore that missing data. So I'm gonna put in an, an, an if statement. Let's see, and I was never really good at working with if statements in Excel, but now that it's so visual, it's, it's much easier for me to understand what's happening. So what do I wanna do? Well, I wanna say that if, fat equals zero, then it should just say zero. And if that's not the case, it should do my calculation, which was fat divided by calories. Was that what? No, other way around. <laughs> there we go. And then I press apply. And see, it then puts zero in all the places where fat was equal to zero. That just opens a bunch of, of uh, really awesome possibilities to start working with those kind of if, if statements. That was a few tips and tricks of some of the things that I do quite a lot when I'm working in Jump. Uh, let me know what you think of this kind of video. Is, do you want more of these kind of tips and tricks videos? Is, do you find that helpful? Let me know and, uh, and I'll maybe keep the series going. But uh, as always, remember to give it a like if you liked it and remember to leave a subscribe if you want more content. Thanks for watching. I'm out.